first off, thank you for joining us this Monday. Yeah, glad to be here. I'm glad to have you. I'll start off with these questions. First off, what do you think is the biggest issue or challenge that needs to be addressed? And if elected, how do you plan on solving that? Well, um, first of all, I appreciate you having me on. I'm glad to, to be here and it's an honor to serve uh, District 20, Middle Georgia. We've had great success in Georgia, good leadership out of the governor, uh, great uh, leadership on the budget, and we have a record surplus and we got a lot accomplished this past session, including some really good teacher pay raises and pay raises for our state employees and uh, we've returned over $5 billion to the Georgia taxpayers because of our fiscal responsibility and, and good budgeting and uh, returned over $5 billion in surplus to Georgia. And so I'm very proud of that. I think Georgia's on, on the right track. Uh, we always have challenges. Uh, we have uh, mental health issues that we need to continue to, to work on. We put a lot of money in the budget for mental health, but as just like it nationwide, we've got a mental health crisis and that's an area I'd like to see us make some improvement on and progress. Uh, we've got to look at our, our civil liability uh, environment, our tort reform environment. We did pass two real good tort reform bills this past session, but there's more work to be done in that. As chairman of the insurance committee, I work on some of those issues and my plan is to attend some national meetings during the interim to see what other states have done to try to address this issue. We, we are the number one state in the nation to do business, but uh, we can't continue to be that if we have a uh, civil justice system uh, that is not fair and balanced uh, because insurance rates are skyrocketing like, like a lot of other things are, are skyrocketing in price due to the Biden inflation factor we're dealing with. So we want to get a handle on that. Um, we could do a better job with our state prison system. We've got a Senate committee looking at that over the interim too. Um, I've spent a lot of time working on our occupational licensing issue. Um, we have one of the more burdensome occupational licensing systems in the country. Uh, and that's a barrier to work for Georgians that we don't need to have. We want to make it easy for them to get in the workplace and earn a, earn a fair wage. So I'm gonna continue working on that. The Lieutenant Governor uh, and the Speaker are putting together a task force to look at that. The Secretary of State's office oversees these occupational licensing boards and they've adopted a new system, a computer system to, that was supposed to make it more uh, easy, easy to use and faster to get your licenses and renew your licenses and uh, something is wrong because I'm getting a lot of calls from constituents that they can't get their renewal. Uh, so we're gonna look into that and, and solve that problem for, for hardworking Georgians. But those are just some of the things I wanna work on. Rural health care continues to be a challenge. Um, I wanna look at uh, avenues to strengthen our rural health care. We've had great success with economic development in all the corners of the state. Uh, the Governor Kemp is, and his team have done a remarkable job bringing in industry and over 75% of the new announcements have been outside of Metro Atlanta and I'm really proud of that. But because of that, we've got to look at uh, rural health care in these areas. We've got to look at workforce development in these areas. I don't know where we're gonna find all the workers um, and we've got to you know, look at infrastructure to support the transportation of goods and, and all these areas. And, and, and also the last thing is uh, workforce housing, uh, especially in, in rural areas. So lots still to work on. I am proud of the progress we're making. I think Georgia is a great place to, to uh, live, work and raise a family, but um, there's always uh, challenges ahead. Of course. Now, how has your background and experience prepared you for this role? Well, I grew up in Georgia, lived here all my life, uh, became involved uh, most of my life. Adrian and I, my wife, have lived in Houston County, and I became involved in the community through civic involvement with Rotary Club and the Chamber. I later became a uh, chairman of the Downtown Development Authority in Perry, and then 
then became, got on the development authority for Aston County. And so the more I got involved and the more I realized that by working together with people, uh, finding consensus, you could make progress. And I felt like I had a, a knack to bring people together and to, to bring consensus. I decided to run for elected office and in 2015 was fortunate enough to get elected. And now I've had uh, nine sessions under my belt. I'm in a position of, uh, of some authority at the, at the Capitol. I've got a really good committee uh, slate that I'm on. I chair insurance and labor. I also chair the subcommittee on appropriations for agriculture, natural resources, and ag education. Uh, so those are two very important chairmanships I have. I'm in leadership in the Senate Republican Caucus and have a strong relationship with both the governor, lieutenant governor, and speaker. Uh, so based on my experience as a business owner, my experience working in the community, and my experience now in the legislature, uh, I know how to get things done and I've built relationships and have developed the credibility with my peers to be able to get things done. And this past session, I had my most productive and successful session ever. And part of that is because I've, I've been there a little while and know how to, how to get things done and have got friends that are helping me that I've worked with and, and developed those type of relationships. And I hope the voters of the 20th will let me continue uh, to serve them and it's a real honor all right and lastly what would progress look like to you if you were elected this time well we're seeing a lot of progress and, and all throughout my district we're seeing uh, success on the economic development front in lawrence county we just had a big groundbreaking and, and industry announcement for wash on which is going to be over 400 jobs a huge investment in that community wow. uh, here in perry we not too long ago, had the announcement of Jack Links coming to Perry, uh, and I work hard to the Ag Center in Perry is near and dear to my heart. I grew up showing livestock in 4-H, and I'm um, and proud to see those young people in Perry showing their livestock and, and other things that they're involved in. And so I've been a big supporter of the Georgia National Fairgrounds and Ag Center, and we, in this budget that the governor signed last week, we got $22 million in the budget for the Ag Center uh, for a new sheep and swine building and for some roof repairs and some other other maintenance items at the fairgrounds. That doesn't just happen. You have to have the right leadership in place. Uh, you have to have a good relationship with the governor uh, to get that kind of thing. And our delegation uh, it works well together, and I'm tickled to bring that that to Perry. So those are the type of things that we can do by working together and with experienced leadership. Um, I'm very excited about the integrated precision ag farm that the University of Georgia is bringing to Perry. It's going to be across the street from the Agri Center uh, on 250 acres, and it's going to be the smart farm of the future, uh, where the latest in technology from Google, Microsoft, John Deere, the chemical companies, the irrigation companies and all is gonna be showcased and demonstrated and tested. And the, the young people that come to the Ag Center can see what the future of ag looks like and hopefully get interested in a career in agriculture, our number one industry. Uh, and then we can also have, show our farmers uh, what is out there for them to use on the farm and train our extension agents there and. I'm very excited about that. Ag is our number one industry, but they the farming is a difficult, economically in a difficult situation. All their input costs have skyrocketed and the commodity prices have, have remained about the same as they've been for, for decades. So farmers are struggling to make it financially and the only way they're gonna be able to compete on a, a international level and compete with the cheap labor in Mexico and other places is to be efficient and to use technology and to work smarter, not harder. And uh, that's what this uh, integrated precision ag farm or, or the grand farm is going to be about. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Walker. I think that's everything. Thank you for having me. Yes.